It's that time again. Lou Elizondo. Is he an American patriot whistleblower or is he controlled leaking from the US government deep state? This is Lou Elizondo, friends. I have made another video already on him. Now, you, Lou Elizondo, friends, he's come out. He's now appeared in the UFO community. Lou, he has served America. We thank you for your service. There's a few things going on here, though, okay? So Lou has dropped some bombshells on the world. He's released a book. I made my whole video about it. There's a lot of crazy stuff, like they have biologics from non-human intelligence. There's this, like, little biomass that was inserted into somebody, and, it, like, it moves on its own accord. He speaks about orbs following him home. And he talks about, yes, aliens, what we call aliens, so non-human intelligence are real. There's multiple dimensions. There's things outside of our senses of, uh, of reality, which is the five human senses, right? Like you can lick and you can sniff and you can... All these other things, you know what I mean, friends? So there's stuff outside beyond that, okay? So we got that point. But now we've got to go a step further, friends, because I'm going to show you clips from this Lou Elizondo video. He's going to be doing more videos and... You can make up your mind, but I'm just going to give you just some, some foreshadowing, so forewarning. So, shout out to Baby Doll Ashton, friends. Ashton has obviously been covering the missing Malaysia MH370 flight, okay? So, he has shown the orbs circling the plane. It is not science fiction, okay? This is advanced american tech okay so as you can see here we go slowly we will we will you are going to pop out of existence there you go i've made many videos on it you'll find the descriptions below and if you want friends you can actually go to my youtube channel here thank you for for liking subscribing if you scroll down here click on ufo videos you'll be able to just see the playlist. chocolate muffin I there we go so the playlist of all these is the oldest of the last but you can see ufo right so there's lua zondo mh 371s being wormholed out now, friends, Ashton, world's number one investigative journalist, but I'm not making this up. He should be on Time Magazine, okay? Unless, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even joking. Uh, Ashton obviously follows me. He's been putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. So recently, friends, one of our videos blew up. We had identified, thank you, Ashton, the guy who leaked the video, Edward C. Lin, who is still rotting in jail today. U.S. government, get him out. He leaked that video. Okay, so he leaked that video. He's an Army uh, Navy officer, and he shouldn't be there. Because basically, why can't they leak the video? They go, well, the American public, the world's not allowed to know that all points in space-time are connected. Cold fusion is real, which is where you have a nuclear reaction where you cool things down to zero, and all the ramifications of that, like them being able to warp at hyperspeed, which is what they're able to do now. Here's something, though. Lou Elizondo blocked Ashton. Why? Lou. Hi, folks. Prior to my YouTube tonight, I'll be going live here. Ashton, I'm blocked. I can't reply, but I would like to know why Lou is protecting national energy security over an issue that could provide limitless green energy. So it's basically, friends, as he's showing you. Question. Look at this. Thank you, Zero Point Energy Disclosure. Why are you hiding Zero Point Energy technology? So he just blocks them. <laughs> Bro. Okay, that should, that should automatically tell you something ain't right here. So the guy put out from the U.S. government, who's, yes, American patriot, and, yeah, he, he lost money, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we get it. We have people here who actually know the, doctor, the doctors, the, the, the guys working behind it, and the theory, and he's blocking them. Clearly, friends, there's something going on. By the way, not, this is not just an inkling. By the time you watch his interview... There are questions. He's going to be making it really obvious. He's going to use terms like, we are waiting and we, 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 we. Bro, who's we? Who's we? You either got the tech or you're not. Now, here's the thing. We know you got the tech. We're not silly. And if you want some inspiration, look, friends, a lot of these, a lot of boomers and stuff out here, they, I get it. You grew up in a world where you watch the television box. There's a guy with a comb over here and he goes, and that's why I choose to smoke cigarettes you know those people and you that was your marketing and stuff back back then okay the new youth us we don't give a crap about that okay it is so far disconnected we see that as a paid shield okay now the people who are speaking to everyone they're wearing pikachu hats okay and we don't think we don't think twice about it they are sitting on squeaky chairs they got fluffy microphones 
and they just do it 24 seven. Why? Because they can. We already saw an imaginary internet Ponzi Bitcoin become one cent to the US dollar. Then it became $1 and now it's worth $67,000. So there were no movies made about maybe there's going to be a Ponzi technology that takes over the world. You guys had none of this back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. This thing is already a unicorn in the world. So all this alien, non-human intelligence, orbs, and all this stuff, that's easy for us to understand. Everybody in crypto is like, yeah, we can totally see that. Because we're used to waking up. The media does all these fabricated lies, FUD events. Prices get dumped down. They try to tell everybody, oh, this thing is for terrorists and child pedophiles and all these other nasty things, which you know is a bunch of BS. Controlled FUD, that we call it, okay? And then everything seems to move on. But the pockets of the big guys in control, they seem to get bigger and bigger. So I'm just prefacing this for you because you're going to see now, that's why none of our minds are really blown that much. Like, yeah, duh, we already saw Bitcoin go from a dollar to $67,000. We made scarcity on the internet, which nobody predicted was ever going to be possible. Okay, so that's why these things, it's, it's, it, it's a bridge that's easy to cross. Now, based off the UFO tech friends, here is Ashton. Salvatore Pice resu resume is extremely impressive. His patents are important to humanity's future. So... He knows we can turn these EVOs into a doomsday weapon. My interview with Mr. Pais on November 24th will be better than the congressional UFO hearing. So, friends, let me just tell you. So, Dr. Salvatore, honestly, I, I want there's a lot of information to go through. I'm just going to be honest. How's this dude alive? I want to know. How is this guy breathing right now? Okay, I've got to do the sign of the cross. How are we even able to talk about this guy's actually got the science? So if you want to know, friends, right, you and I, to heat up homes, electricity, you got to spend a lot of energy. You heat things up, okay? That's like heating fusion, okay, heating. But there's something known as cold fusion, where if you heat something towards zero or you make something super cool, there's an actual nuclear reaction. You can get energy out of that. It's called cold fusion. Now, here's the thing. The science academias of the world have been letting us all down. They're meant to have been talking to us about it. The problem is... The Department of Energy in America, the deep state, okay, literally deep, deep, deep state, they have been telling all the scientists like Neil deGrasse Tyson, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> no, 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 eh, eh, eh. they've been telling all of them, don't tell the public this is possible. Tell them they're all kooks. There's not enough evidence because they don't want to let the rest of the world know that you can make energy by cooling things down because the, they say the science does not support it, which is a load of BS, okay? The science does support it. And you have this overwhelming theme, friends. You know, okay, the US dollar, backed by faith. They need to control oil. That's everybody's bid for the US dollar around the world. That's how that's how the US government, that's how they have power. 85% of the world uh, currency trading volume is the US dollar. They have to keep control over that, okay? Now, after knowing all of this, I want you to think about Ashton revealing all of these, okay, being blocked by a government guy. And now let's have a look at Lou in this. Listen to what he says. Basically a three and a half year effort um, to get out just a, a, a small portion of what, what I've been privy to. Um, probably five, maybe 8% of what I know uh, I've been able to discuss. But Okay, bro, game, set, match. Like we're done already. Stop the whole interview. You're not a whistleblower. I can only tell you about 5% of what I know. Who's controlling that? What information? I'm, I'm going to warm you up into this, friends. So I want, I'm going to tell you the answers now so you understand where it's all coming from. Okay, so it's very clear he's allowed to live. He ain't a real whistleblower. Okay, it's very clear the U.S. government, friends, the deep state, they know people are eventually going to figure something out. Something big's coming. They know. There's congressional stuff happening. You know, David Grash. They know... The momentum is already there. They know people like me and you, friends. You know when you call someone like a retardio or someone autistic, like everyone in crypto, we're like, yeah, I want to watch that guy. We have flipped the paradigm of these people's minds because, you know, back in the day, friends, you have someone like Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar, friends, when he made his first, you know, like uh, George Knapp, who's one of the treasures of the UFO community. When Bob Lazar was talking about he working at Area 51 and all these, we always think about... Um, it, or this discussion, right, in my Telegram, we're always talking about, hey, why is the guy still alive? Why did they kill him? And then we, we it's very obvious to figure out why. Bob Lazar, friends, he was considered a kook back then. One, he was into prostitutes, okay? Uh, true. Also, and number number two, another thing as well, uh, 
they were they were able to sell him as like a kook. Like he's got giant glasses, looks like a massive nerd. Um, we love Bob Lazar. But I'm just, just telling you, that's how they're able to paint him. Also, um, Bob was so crazy, he was putting jet engines on his car and driving around the neighborhood. Okay, so it was it was they were able to control it as like a kooky guy back then, even though it got viral and stuff in the 70s, 80s, 90s, whenever he leaked it. But they were able to kind of control that guy, oh, yeah, that guy's nuts. How were they able to do it? Remember, they went to his university and the university lecturers say, this guy never studied here. He never got a degree over here. They were able to wipe it, okay? They wipe it from MIT. But if they went and checked Los Alamos and his name was actually in the book. So they went and wiped 99.9% .9 of all the evidence of him working there. They forgot one, okay? So we, you and I, friends, we already know. The government deep state, they can do a lot. I mean, like, hey, Donald Trump, gee, I wonder if the fourth random assassination attempt, is that going to fail like the others? You see what I mean, friends? We know what's going on. Let's continue with Lou Elizondo. There's going to be people who read it and say, wow, I, I had no idea about that. And <clears throat> that's because I received um, approval to do so. So my hope is... I mean, I get, but it's just, I've received approval to talk about this. Here's the thing, friends. They Look, it's very obvious. Lou looks like an honest guy. They put him out to the front. Very of it. Bro, why are you blocking Ashton? The guy's got the science equations, by the way. He's got the dudes making the stuff. Like, when, when he, this guy's got zero point energy, literally on the cusp. But by the way, just to let you know, friends, you want to know how I know crypto's not going away? It's because nobody in crypto gets silently assassinated and disappeared when they talk about crypto. Okay? If you want to actually disappear and be wiped off this place of this earth, go to your backyard. Make a zero-point energy experiment where you start running your house from a little uh, one liter of water. I promise you'll be gone in 30 days. I'm not even joking. Go do that and get that published in your local newspaper. I mean, there's literally these documentaries. I mean, remember, I've told you about it. There's a documentary. Rest in peace to this gentle sir. I made many posts about it. This documentary filmmaker collected all the dead bodies about people who are working on this stuff. They gave him an aggressive form of cancer. He was dead in four months. Okay, and a, a super aggressive form of cancer. He knew. He basically said, yeah, sorry, they got me. Okay, so he couldn't finish the film. Okay, so this is the biggest stuff of all. Okay, it's zero point energy. And also, you got to think about it from a national security type of perspective. Do you really want a bunch of cave dudes out in the Middle East that they don't know making, you know, grab anti-gravity tech that could just march on in through New York City? So that's where they're coming from, this massive fear perspective. So now, friends, I'm going to go through another filtered question here for you. I've got the best, highest value content from this interview. Let's listen. It's going to talk about Russia and some UFOs and stuff. I have a question. If Russia were getting ready to launch a nuclear weapon, do you think these quote-unquote beings, aliens, etc., have the ability to neutralize these weapons? Personally, I wish they'd be proactive and neutralize every nuclear weapon. Yeah, here, here, me too. Uh, <clears throat> hell, I wish they'd neutralize every weapon, period. Um, but that's not up to me. Um, they do have the, we do know that they have the ability to interfere with our nuclear capabilities. Um, we have seen them in some cases, it would appear to be deactivating, uh, an entire flight of, of our nuclear missiles, ballistic missiles. But uh, as, as encouraging as that may be in Russia is a different case, uh, a UAP actually armed one. And so therein lies my concern. And furthermore, if you look at the historical, your question on the historical context of, of, of the greater UAP issue, you'll notice something. <clears throat> In fact, um, there's only been one country that's ever uh, deployed a, an atomic or nuclear device, and that's been the United States. And we did it in World War II, and we vaporized almost half a million souls off the planet uh, almost instantly. And the UAP didn't stop that from happening, either in Hiroshima or Nagasaki. Furthermore, they didn't stop the development from the atomic age to the nuclear age, where we have go from the kiloton yield to now the megaton yield, right? The city squashers, the, the real big nukes. Um, they didn't stop the testing of, of nuclear technologies in the deserts of Nevada or Russia doing high altitude tests or underwater tests. In fact, they didn't stop the proliferation of nuclear weapons going from just the United States, then Russia, and now everybody to include possibly Iran and North Korea and Pakistan and India and, you know, name your country, all have now nuclear capabilities, nuclear weapons, right? They didn't stop that from happening. And they didn't stop some of the nuclear accidents like Three Mile Island or Chernobyl or Fukushima. So um, the argument that, you know, are they here to help us? There's just no evidence to suggest that. Um, other than, you know, maybe wishful thinking. Now, I wish the same thing. I really hope that's the case. 
We just don't have any real information to substantiate that. And so there's a lot of people at the Pentagon that don't want to take that risk. They're not willing to to say, look, I'm going to gamble your future and our future and our safety because we hope these things are here for, for nice reasons, right? That's a gamble that, that your national security apparatus and most national security apparatuses aren't willing to take that chance. And- Do you see the language, friends, like... People at the Pentagon, we don't want to take that chance. I think it's also, friends, just like let's let's beat not beat around the bush, okay? They're obviously trying to butter us up so they can justify why they had to do a lot of dead body sweeping along the way. Okay, it's very obvious. Do you know how many dead bodies they've got? Do you know how many things they've done where friends, if America, if <laughs> If you guys knew what these guys are doing, we only know 1%. My gosh, you literally flip the government overnight. That's it. Flip it overnight. It's very obvious. They're like, threat, threat, threat. Everything's a threat. Everything's a threat. Also, let's talk about a bit philosophically free will, okay? If you're a child and let's say your parent's watching you and the child, friends, sometimes kids, let's say the child walks closer and closer. Let's say there's literally a glass cup glass of orange juice and the child walks closer to the glass and they're looking at the parent and they walk closer and the parent's like "Eh, eh, eh, you better not tip that over and the child's like oh you haven't stopped me and the child goes here's the glass the child goes and just pushes the glass over and it spills on the floor and the glass cracks now imagine the child that's basically humans here that's like the u.s pentagon going like well 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 you didn't try to stop me you're not looking out for my best intentions at all. They're doing this psyops, but maybe they just believe they're MBS. I don't know. Like this whole concept of free will, like how much of it is like you're allowed to do what you're allowed to do. If we watch, like for his example, friends as well, uh, you know, National Geographic, when you're watching the tiger go and take out the deer, imagine the deer's like, well, 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 the humans don't care. Bunch of evil SOBs. They should get nuke vaporized by some aliens. Imagine the, the deer was thinking that. No, maybe this is just nature taking its course. But they're not going to talk like that from my perspective, of course. They're going to, because it's the government, friends. What the government's like, hey, we're in a box. Stay in our box. Nobody look outside. We're in control. That's how it is. Let's continue. Now, friends, we're going to dive a bit into reincarnation, and it's going to get a bit more juicy. Let's continue. Humans are extra dimensional. How does that fit into the puzzle? Dr. Jim Tucker, UVA, has written extensively on reincarnation. What's your take on this? Well, I don't know if reincarnation is necessarily extra dimensional or hyper dimensional or trans dimensional. You know, part of the problem is we really have to be specific on our use of certain terminology. For example, we used to say UFO. Well, what does that mean? And what about USOs? And, you know, what about, you know, are they even really flying? So now we change it to UAP and whatnot. Terms are important. Um, When we say reincarnation, that is a theological, religious, philosophical uh, belief system that requires um, the belief that people are kind of recycled, kind of uh, kind of green technology, right? We, we live, we learn, we die, and then we come back again, and we kind of go through these experiences in this hope that we will eventually uh, evolve ourselves emotionally and physically and spiritually to, to become the, the, the perfect human being, um, <clears throat> whatever that perfection looks like, right? It's an eye of the beholder. Um, Religion, by definition, is supernatural. Religion is extra dimensional. It's a belief. And by the way, you notice I'm not giving you my own personal belief here. It doesn't mean I'm not, I'm not religious and I'm not spiritual. Let me just caveat that. But I'm saying the belief in religion and spirituality, by definition, has to be, you have to believe in interdimensions because it's a belief in something, an idea where when someone dies, they potentially... So, friends, as you just you get in this idea, you're like, you know what, bro, you know a bit too much <laughs> for a guy that's just, whoa, aliens are real. You know what I mean, friends? You're starting to get this idea. They know a lot. There's a big, big, big catalog of stuff, and they're like, um, how do we drift this out? How do we like seep this out into the mind of the general population? Let's continue about the other UAP as well. This is the second part of his answer. Et cetera, it doesn't, doesn't exist. We can't interact with it unless we do through technology. 
Um, but we know that there is reality beyond those five senses, right? In fact, most of the universe lies beyond those five senses. Um, and so, you know, I can't sit here and tell you definitively that UAP are interdimensional. Some have certainly um, have, have postulated that, um, that they could be interdimensional. But I'm not sure we even understand enough about our own dimension, our own reality, to speculate on what another reality or a parallel reality or maybe a shadow biome, if you feel a shadow biosphere, maybe living in and around us all along, but uh, we just can't perceive it. You know, this kind of goes back to the old stories and and lore of like fairies, where to this day, people believe in them, right? Uh, They believe in them. Think about what he just said. I'm going to get this picture out. A shadow biome, friends. So this might be our world. And there's something out here which we can't even see. This is the earth, right? Something out here. Yeah, this is obviously the earth. Here's me, you and me. Everyone chilling out. Okay, so this, the words coming out of Lou, if you're watching Lou, congratulations, sir. This is not, this is not whistleblower talk stuff. This is, I know a shitload. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm from the government. I know a lot. You don't know a lot. I have to carefully, slowly let you know one piece at a time after it gets 15 ticks from above. Now, friends, this is an amazing story about a UFO incident with Italia. Check it out. Listen to this part. Can you expand on the Italian's helicopter that was allegedly shot down yeah. by UAP and anything we have learned from that? Yeah, one of the lead investigators was actually the equivalent of the Italian uh, commander for the SEALs, uh, their Navy SEALs equivalent, special operations. Um, they So let me give you a little background. There was this city uh, on an island that was being plagued by um, the what they considered um, fires that were just occurring randomly. And when you looked at the, when, not me, when the investigators looked at the burn patterns in some of these older houses where the copper wiring was a conduit, they were actually able to calculate the wavelength. And they, they, they thought this was a, some sort of directed energy. Initially, they thought it was a Soviet sub, uh, a Russian submarine um, near the horizon that was shooting uh, directed energy beams at the village. Uh, and uh, it was causing these fires. And so because of that, they built this huge Faraday cage, actually, um, around the village, uh, in front of the village, to try to see if they could actually collect these waves. When they started um, seeing UAP, discs, floating orbs, uh, silver discs, and there's multiple, multiple pictures and photographs and videos. I actually spoke to the people who ran the investigation. It was a top secret investigation at the time. Not U.S. top secret, so I can talk about it. Foreign top secret. Um, And it's no longer top secret. They released the, the results. So let me just caveat that. I'm not speaking out of turn. I'm not talking about anything classified. Um, uh, 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 so sus, bro. That's so sus. Who talks like that? You know what I mean? I'm not, not speaking out of anything classified, guys. It's like he's being watched by like all of the deep state general guys and they're watching him and they're like, don't talk about anything outside of anything of these. Okay, by the way, there's a common goal that you're going to find out as we go in deeper in this. As, as Just have this perspective of this stuff they release, friends. Okay, just think about that. Let's continue. But um, when they got up close and personal to, to one of these UAP, it reacted. Uh, and in fact, it, uh, they, they described um, it shooting out some sort of beam and interfering with the helicopter, um, not just the mechanics, but the actual physical structure. And when the helicopter came down to do an emergency landing, um, they looked at the the blade of one of the helicopter blades that provide lift for the helicopter. And it appeared to be blown out from the inside out um, as if uh, think of think of sap on a tree when there's a fire. Right. And then that sap burns inside the tree and kind of explodes the tree very much the same way. And um, they, they were, I've seen the pictures. I've seen the video. There are, is absolutely something that is pursuing this helicopter. This helicopter was a undercover helicopter, right? Uh, you couldn't tell it was a military helicopter. Only the people flying it knew it was a military mission. And um, so they were, very, they were very concerned about that. Uh, fascinating, fascinating investigation. And it's a great question because people forget about that. And these types. So uh, also, I think it's interesting, I've noticed with a lot of these, all these government guys, 
they have like all these extreme detailed curated answers when it comes to anything that might involve damage, friction, involving a human or any of the other stuff. It's always that. It's it's never a perspective of, well, they've communicated around us 400 million times and nothing went bad. And they're, they're ne it's never that part. It's always like threat. There's a threat over there. Therefore, little humans, plebs, we are going to have the power and control. You can't handle this science. You're not even allowed to know that this science exists, by the way. We're going to take this perspective of we are the kings and you are the peasants. Now, this next question is very sus, the way he answers. Check this out. Reason for the disclosure timeline that is now in place. Does this event have anything... Look, look, actually, listen to this, listen to this. This one's from Bodie Fuller 9783 Lou, we keep hearing rumours about a quote-unquote major event that could be the reason for the disclosure timeline that is now in place. Does this event have anything to do with this asteroid Apophis scheduled very narrowly to miss our planet in 2027? Negative. It has nothing to do with the asteroid Apophis uh, and its approach to Earth. It has to do with something else potentially, which I'm not prepared to go into conversation right now. Understood. And I know naturally a lot of people would be curious uh, on that note. Is there anything you'd want to expand on that when it comes to 2027? Or? I'm going to, not 2027, but I'm going to, there may have been some other dates proposed, but I'm going to let the experts um, noodle on that and figure that out. Um, you know, it's certainly too premature for me to say anything uh, one way or the other because um, I, I, we simply don't have enough data. So I'm just going to do a polite pass on that question. Uh, and, you know, that good. I mean, it just speaks volumes itself there. Like, so sus. How do you know? this? this oh, like, fans, if you watch, like, as other national treasure, like Richard Dolan, so we love Uncle Dickie. Uncle Dickie Dolan, when he answers questions like this, the true gentleman in the UFO community, okay, who's pr provided so much, he speaks about different people's opinions. He go, and he always says, we don't have all the facts. There is something going on. It could be that. Do you understand? He has a, he's a very rational approach of like, hey, we're on this journey of discovery together. Okay. What we just heard there was like, no, I'm going to tell you the answer maybe later. And you can't get anything. You can't get anything besides that from me at this moment in time. Really sus, man. Friends, this next one, I mean, it's getting juicy and juicy and juicy. Listen to this. Do you think it's possible to back engineer these things or, you know, is it the case that we just don't know the physics? No, I think we know the physics and I sure hope we have the capacity to reverse engineer it. Uh, I cannot say definitively one way or the other if we are or if we have any intention to. That's not my place to do so. Um, but... <laughs> Friends, that's government talk. I'm not allowed to tell you whether or not it's even possible. You see? He's, he's saying like, I'm not allowed to tell you. You know what I mean? I'm not even allowed to imply that it's being done. It's like that the perfect legal response. You see? Uh, if you don't know what's going on, it's kind of like, I know what's going on. Maybe. I haven't heard about it. You see? It gets even more juicy. But, um, you know, we're... we're, we're... We're we're here in the U.S. We're a clever group of little monkeys. You know, we, we can figure things out pretty good. There you go. There you go. By the way, just Americanas, I love you guys. You have one little flaw. You guys got a lot of pride. It's like it's so obvious. They're like, yeah, America. We are some pretty damn smart little monkeys over there. Basically saying, yeah, America, we have reverse engineered it. We can be proud. You can, you'd feel it oozing. A Chinese or a Russian would never talk like that. They, they, they would never be like, oh, yeah, we're really smart. They don't talk like that. They don't talk like that. But maybe because they're the underdogs in their eyes and they're always like second, third, fourth, fifth. They're never going to be America. It's like, yeah, I guess who's on top as well. See, it's just so obvious. It's just like it's – I want you to think about this when it comes to, say, Ashton showing you the drone videos and replying to Lou getting blocked by Lou. He's like, yeah, pretty smart monkeys over there. Okay, so I'll tell you right now, you just, it just oozes right through. Let's continue. 
Uh, and certainly if there's an advantage that can be gained by understanding some sort of new technology, my hope is that there's somebody in our government doing that. He's smirking. Uh, He's smirking. Look at him. prepared to say right now. Good question. Um, boy, these are tough questions. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. See, see, friends. They know them. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on, bro. We know. We know. Now, this is we're booting into a climax, friends. And when I was listening to this part, I had a eureka moment, okay? Let's listen and I'll tell you what happened. Read your book. Um, Have you seen any more orbs? I take my hat off to you, your wife and your daughters. Keep strong. Best wishes from... So this is my Lou Elizondo video to give some backstory. In his book and also in the documentary, you'll play this clip here. Lou, friends, after he was read in, where they teach you about... Hey, there's non-human intelligence. They've been here the whole time. There's different physics. There's all this other stuff. Aliens are real, et cetera, et cetera. Orbs started appearing, these classic UFO orbs. Right? They're just balls of light. They start appearing in his home, okay? So we've got a, I've got a brief clip in here about it. That's because after years of studying UAP encounters, he began experiencing what's known in UAP circles as the hitchhiker effect. UAPs were appearing at his home perhaps because he was attracting them. What started happening? Oh, wow. Where do I start? Um, well, we would have these weird glowing balls of light in the house. They were, they were green. They were um, small. They were diffuse. Um, kind of like like a little neon ball. And it really caused some disruption for, for my kids and my wife. What were you seeing? I would routinely see orbs. What do you mean by orbs? Mm -hmm. Small little spherical green, lightish green type of color. And I'd be just walking down the hall and, and I would just stop and it would just continue to go right through the wall. So we're talking about the hitchhiker effect. Mm -hmm. Something. So friends, the hitchhiker effect, it's actually it also happens in Skinwalker Ranch where people who go around these you know, like uh, just UFO sites, there's there's wild readings of electromagnetism, like people's compasses go wild, there's radiation and stuff, there's things go, obviously there's wacky stuff, okay? Uh, there's parts of the earth where this, this happens uh, frequently. Now, the hitchhiker effect is people who go and experience something, they go home even to another state and it follows them. Weird stuff stops happening. They have weird dreams, they see stuff, they feel stuff, they feel like they're being watched. Um, people have had, like, there's been cases where uh, people have, like, seen stuff move in the corner of their eye, like, uh, like you know, like a pot in a pan and stuff, things move like that. There's been people, yeah, just these types of things happening. So that's why in this part of the, uh, the, the interview, they've asked, have you seen more of them? But just listen, listen. South Wales, UK. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, we haven't recently in, in, in some time. Um pretty much when I when I remove myself from a tip um, what some people refer to as the high strangeness I don't know if I'd call it that I just call it seeing some weird orbs in the house um, that subsided uh, substantially um, and we haven't had that issue since certainly not here in Wyoming and, and when we we're in California um, so uh, yeah weird I mean at, at the end of the day I can't even tell you if it was related to to a tip other than other people in a tip are having the same experiences around the same time. Um, you know, if someone came to me and definitively said it was ball lightning. Okay, sure. Maybe, uh, didn't look at any ball lightning I've ever seen before. Uh, and, um, you know, it happened when I came into the program and it stopped when I left. So, you know, interesting coincidence there. And again, experienced by other people, witnessed by other people who were also in the program. Um, I don't know what to make of it. I, I don't, you know, I, I wanted to put it in the book because it was true. It happened. Um, I so it hit me. This is a possibility, friends. You just got read in to the deepest, top secret, advanced UFO stuff on the American book. Actually, the world book. Actually, humanity's book, okay? You got read in. What well, they call read in, right? Well, because... Not every government has, like, clearance and need. They call it the need to know. So they get read in, okay? So then these weird orbs start following you. Now, you know these weird orbs, friends? Have you heard of the band Foo Fighters? 
You know, the Foo Fighters, the name of Foo Fighters is named after those orbs because the World War II planes that were flying around, orbs would go and visit them inside the aircraft. So they called them Foo. They didn't know what the hell they were. And I think America thought it was the Russians who had like some advanced light technology that they could go in. No, it was actually like they were being watched. So that's crazy, right? That's what actually Foo Fighters are. You ever heard of the Foo Fighters rock band? So these things, obviously they're watching fans. This is probably how they watch. It's like um, if they're in the fourth dimension and they control space time, they can't just appear here like a 3D creature. Or maybe maybe they're just maybe they're just not here made for the environment. So they might have a little orb. It just appears as an orb. And they're probably just watching. Yeah, they, probably, they could probably have a 3D view of something. It's just a technology we don't understand. Like, you imagine, first, just imagine you and I went back to the Middle Ages, like 600 years ago, okay? And then, you know, they're playing out the Braveheart movie in Scotland. We have William Wallace and stuff and everything's going on. And then you and I appear and you, we and I, we've got phones, okay? We've got phones and it's probably, let's say it's pointed to the Black Knight satellite <laughs> around that and we can communicate with each other. And we tell them we are the oracles. And you and I just stand across the field and then we can hear what each other is thinking because we just talk to each other in the phone. They're like, oh, there's a God here, super technology. And then you can answer every question. You see? He knows exactly what's going on. So that, that, that's obviously we're having fun with that technology. But okay, roll this forward a couple of hundred years. Maybe they figure out a way to bend space time and have this little light orb stuff. I also found that interesting that as soon as they left the program, the orbs left. It, friends, it could be, man. It could be one of the deep staters. They got a hold of the tech, right? They got a hold of the tech. So whenever someone comes in, they're like, they're told, hey, use this, use the UFO alien tech. Whoever comes in, spy on them. Make sure they're not talking. Make, just watch them. Just watch them. Just to see if they do something kooky. Because, friends, you know, they did that to Bob Lazar and stuff. So they have that. Remember, that they gave Bob Lazar a sheet, but he didn't know if it was controlled psyops. In terms of is it government, very, very smart, okay, the deep state. Worst thing you could ever do is assume the government's smart, uh, retarded, friends. They're not, okay? Um, so that would give you a lot of information, but a lot of... But a lot of it could be fake, okay? Like, you know, maybe where the alien planets come from. They give you a couple of details and they spread false information in all of it as a backdrop reading. So if you ever leaked, you sound like a nut job. You see? So maybe there are there's like 5% truth in there, but 19 of the items are fake. And you don't know which ones, okay? Because then it'll be easy to, to discredit you. So maybe when you join this program... When they're like, hey, aliens are real, etc. You get added on the list. And they're like, okay, let's go use one of the light orbs on that guy and just see how they react. Because that's what the government does. They just they want to see if you're an honest person. Are you are you gonna be loyal to America? Are you gonna be a patriot? Because some people, they'll hear this, they'll go, they'll lose their mind. They'll go, oh, I'm seeing aliens. They might go to TV, they might do what Bob Lazar did. The government learns. The government learned, they're like, oh, you're gonna go open your mouth. Okay, sweet. Get this guy out of the program and call him a kook and just get him out. Right, and just just like move him away, and he'll, he'll never ever be uh, read into the program again. Now, there's this uh, funny part in here, friends. So, Doctor Stephen Greer, he is this guy. He is like the he his rivals with Lou Elizondo. So, Doctor Stephen Greer says Lou Elizondo is definitely a disinformation agent. He's put by the government. He's set up. It's all curated. Look, you can only answer questions. Oh, I'm not allowed to tell you stuff. And Doctor Stephen Greer has some other things up. It's very controversial because some of the some of the stuff they do. But Lou comments on him. Let's go. And what do you think of the disco disclosure of Dr. Stephen Greer? Um, I'm not overly familiar with Project Bluebeam. I know what it is superficially. Um, as far as commenting on other individuals, as people have asked me about Bob Lazar and him, look, I, I don't talk about people I've never met. Um, you know, I I have a personal challenge. I, I don't like people being deceived. Um, and there are individuals out there, I'm not going to say specifically who, you can fill in the blanks, that have been caught red-handed um, defrauding people, basically claiming to do some sort of UFO summoning and then potentially, allegedly, uh, paying somebody money to drop flares out of a plane. Um, 
you know, I, if that's true, then I want nothing to do with it. I, I, that's, I I don't like it. You know, people, the right out of the gate, the moment I came out of the government, people who never even knew me were making accusations. I was, I was a disinformation agent. First of all, you don't even know what disinformation means. (laughs) Okay. Secondly, um, I'm, I was counterintelligence, uh, which is different than deception operations. That's just people in a vernacular trying to create a soup and saying, oh, well, he, he, there, he's one of those guys. Well, I'm not, and I wasn't. So, um, you know, that's just ignorance um, by, by a lot of people. Um, I don't speak ill of people. Um, my mother always taught me if I have nothing kind to say, don't say it at all. Um, so I'm not going to comment on Dr. Greer or anybody else. Um, and a bit just after that part, friends, he talks about the alien implant stuff that they had and science stuff, but it was always a dead end, dude. There's always a dead end with these guys, okay? But this final part, the climax, I want you to have this idea in your head that everything I've said, it's going to start to make sense. When I tell you, he's coming from a perspective of we, 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 we the government, we the government, we're trying to, and I'm going to tell you the answer right now. So, friends, he has his, you're going to actually almost blatantly say it. Basically says, we the government, we know you guys are eventually going to find out. The problem is you're going to find all the dead bodies. So what we want to actually do is we want to find out from the American people, from the world, okay, American people, what information do you actually want to get off our backs? Do you want us just to say aliens are real and then you guys don't have a revolution and flip the script, okay, and just flip everything upside down? Do you want us to say a bit more? Do you want us to show like a UFO tech? You Basically, what they're doing is they're prying, friends. So that they know they got a long list of stuff. You got orbs, you got Ashton stuff. There's no way they're releasing that. No way. What they're trying to do is they're trying to slowly throw a breadcrumb to get everybody uh, to like basically say, hey, hey, look the other way. Okay. So let's continue. When I have the time. Uh, and that's a way to engage with people and talk with people personally and, and answer their questions directly. What I hope to achieve here is twofold. A, increase awareness of the topic. So it's more palatable to have the conversation. It's no longer filled with stigma and unnecessary taboo. But two, start engaging the people for what they think we should do. Right. I've been doing this now for seven years and we've had a game plan. I was very open with the American people, what my game plan was, how we were going to do it. The five pillars of engagement to include legislative engagement, engagement, executive engagement. Uh, We had um, engagement with the media, international engagement and finally public engagement. And I've been very open about that. I've, I've told everybody from day one what my strategy was and how we were succeeding and in some cases how we're failing. Um, but now I think we've come to the time, come to a point. I think now we have come to a point in the conversation where we need to open the tent and bring more people under the tent and start figuring out what does the everyday person want from this topic? What does it mean to them? Bingo. How would they like us to handle this? What does disclosure really look like, right? Is it full open kimono or is it just the acknowledgement that, Hey, we're not alone. Um, because this conversation has always involved people. And affects, as I've always told people, affects each and every one of us equally and yet differently, depending on the way you were raised and your religious and cultural background, etc. And there are reasons to have a three or a four star general in this conversation as it relates to national security. But this is a much bigger conversation, isn't it? This is a conversation that affects us as a people from a psychological perspective, a sociological perspective, a theological perspective a philosophical perspective, and I'm not sure that a general is necessarily qualified to lead the conversation in those regards. Maybe it's better that we have a priest or a rabbi or a mom as part of that conversation. Maybe we have, uh, you know, just regular citizens as part of that conversation, soccer moms and PTA and and, and, uh, oil field workers. and, and So I have the mog glasses on, friends, because now... We're going to have to mog him. We're going to mog all of them. You see how they're trying to control the narrative? What, what, what does disclosure look like? Oh, you mean the term where you disclose that aliens are real when you've been calling people crazy for like 80 years? Hmm. It goes deeper than that, by the way. That's where they wanted to stop. But I'll put on the mog glasses again one more time. We're going to mog them. We're going to mog them. Science industry mogged. Academia, mogged, every single university, mogged, mogged, 
Mogged. You're all getting mogged. All of you. You're all frauds. Ashton has called all of you out. You see, friends, when you're in the crypto industry, you know something ain't right. You know it ain't. Okay. Now, here's the truth. I was under the impression that science academia guys, freaks, I thought one plus one will always equal two. And so you can sit down and shut up. In the science and academia world, controlled demolition and opposition from the government, they print the currency, they pay the universities to keep the kids retarded and dumb. They say, no, there's no science for cold fusion here. No, you're not at warp speed. No, speed of light is the fastest. Stop looking at all these things. Go look at these crazy, stupid theories. They're just wasting everyone's time. Okay? So the truth is all these science academia people are cucks. We all thought in society, you guys have formulas that you can't argue with. E equals MC squared. Five plus five is 10. We thought that, okay, there's universally true. It turns out the Department of Energy, all the other deep state institutions of the US government, you know, your Lockheed Martin, your Skunk Works, all of them, it actually turns out they have information that they just don't want being tested out there in the real world. So they will pay scientists and journalists and university lecturers to tell people that the science experiment here doesn't work. You're autistic if you believe in it. It's all a bunch of cuckoo for Ghazi. You guys, are, you guys are let down the world. That's the thing. So, of course, friends, we know the government, you've got to maintain world control. Okay, we're not surprised at this. You see all this uh, this, white, this washing out of uh, morals and stuff. I get it, government. All right, it's, it's, a, it's an arms race. You guys can't think outside the box. You think everyone's trying to kill each other. We get it. But, but the science cucks, these are the ones that have let everyone down. You were the guys and girls and pups and squirrels. You were the ones where the government comes out you are the ones who are meant to give us the equation. You're the ones that are meant to give us the formula. You are the ones who are meant to do those little fancy experiments and go, oh, red plus blue is purple. But you didn't. Because the government told you red plus blue is not purple, my friend. Red plus blue is a Batman symbol. And you're like, yep, it's a Batman symbol. Look away here. You're crazy. Aliens definitely aren't real. Definitely, okay? That's the ultimate conclusion of all of these, friends. The government's in control. The science cucks. Because, they're, friends, they're science cucks, man. I don't blame you. You wear your little lab coat. You got your little test tube here. The government says, hey, you're getting paid your 180 grand a year. By the way, if you tell people uh, the truth in this equation and the truth in these experiments, guess what? I'm going to rug pull your 180 grand a year, and you'll go, uh, have no job. you got to work Macca's drive through They did that to everyone, and it works. It literally works. Like I said, friends, we know this in crypto. They print the currency out of thin air. The government and the US Fed, the basic ones in one institution, they print the currency out of thin air. Then they go to the universities, which they give with the printed currency, and they teach them how to indoctrinate the kids and the scientists. And they go in the mainstream media. Everybody is being spread the same false information. And then you have someone like Ashton, who is basically mogging them through Twitter. Okay. Who would have thought Elon Musk buying Twitter for $40 billion would help us get closer to discovering that aliens are real. They've been here the whole time. The government knows a lot more than we think. And it's all happening around us. We never would have thought that. One of the unintended consequences of that. Does it all make sense now? It all makes sense. So if Lou is on, if you're watching... It's okay, bro. I get it. I get it. It's all a game. It's all, I get it. It's a game. Controlled demolition. You're all scared because you've killed way too many people. Like, how's the US government going to come out and say, hey, I know we've killed about thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And we had all these like erasing of histories and we're able to manipulate all this information. And it was like one big giant psyops campaign for the past 80 years. But don't flip a revolution on us, please. You see, that's their fear, friends. Their fear is just people wake up. Their fear is people wake up. So they've got the programming, they've got the TVs, they've got everything else out here. Now, where do we go from here? Well, I'm going to continue watching Ashton mog everyone. <laughs> I just keep mogging them. 
Okay. Um, friends, when it's one or two people in a little laboratory, the deep state have got you. When you have hundreds of thousands of retardio people on the internet wearing Pikachu hats who are like, we're not even surprised by like, this is not an ontological shock for me. Aliens are real, dude. Like I already told you, friends, we already saw, we saw imaginary internet money, Bitcoin go from one penny to one dollar to now $69,000. Yeah, we already, our minds already blown. We're, we're like, okay, so aliens are real. You guys have been making movies about that for like 40 years. You see that? It's it's such an easy bridge to cross. That's why we're the new, we're the youth, okay? And the boomers are like in, getting washed out. So what do you think about all of that, friends? Do you think, Lula Zondo, whistleblower, controlled operative, somewhere in the middle, you decide. Like, subscribe, belly button, or catch you in the next one.